sets A and B. Uh, what is a function from A uh, from A to B? So you the notation used is a function A arrow B, right? F colon A arrow B, right? So a function is a rule that associates every element of A with a unique element of B, right? So this is uh, so this is a rule that associates every element of A with a unique element of B. So, that there are two key words here every and unique. Okay. So, when you so when you take an element of A, for every element of A, there is a unique element of B associated with it. Okay. So, if you take an element x in A, then there is a unique element of B f of x that is associated with it. So, there cannot be more than one, right? this unique uh, element. Also, this every element of A, right? which means that you cannot leave out anything, everything in A must have a corresponding element here. Correct. So, that is the definition of a function. Okay. So, in this notation, so the terminology used is that this point here f of x is the image of this element x under this function and you say that x is the pre image of this element under this uh, function. Okay. These are terminologies that are commonly used. Also, uh, the set A is called, called what? Domain. Right. So, the set A is called the domain and set B is called the codomain. Okay. So, uh, so, there is some difference in terminology here. Uh, some people call it the range. Okay. Uh, there is some inconsistencies in terminology, but we will call the set B uh, the codomain and we will reserve the term range for a related but slightly different concept. Okay. So, remember I told you that for the rule associates every element of A with a unique element of B, but you could have elements in B which are not covered, right, which may not be images of any particular element here. See, you cannot afford to miss out anything here, right, because it says every element of A has to be mapped, but some elements here may not be mapped, may not be Im images of anything here, right. So, it is possible for example, that only some of these guys are mapped and some of these guys may not be mapped, right. So, uh, the word range is used to describe only those values, uh, sorry not values, the elements of B which are actually taken as functional, uh, which the function actually takes as values. Okay. Uh, so, we will define the range R of the function as the set. So, the set of all y uh, in B such that uh, there exists x in A for which f of x equal to y. Okay. So, we do not call set B the range, we call set B the codomain and range is the subset of the codomain consisting of those elements which are which are actually taken by the function. right? So, the codomain may have certain elements which are not in the range and those elements are never taken by the function. right? Those, uh, so, essentially they are left out by the function so to speak. Okay? You cannot leave out anything here, but you can leave out some elements here. Is this clear? That is just a matter of terminology. Okay? Some people say in the context where it does not really matter, some people call this the range. Right, so, the whole thing the codomain is called the range, but I think in this situation I think it is useful to distinguish the codomain and the range. Okay. So, that is uh, any questions on this?
So, that is a function from A to B, okay. Uh, and remember that you cannot have, so you can have uh, multiple elements mapping to the same thing, that is allowed, but you cannot have one element mapping to multiple things, that is not allowed, all right. Now, there are uh, there are a few more uh, specific kinds of functions which will also be of interest to us. Um, so, remember I told you there could be multiple elements here mapping to the same element here for a function. Uh, so, a function for which that does not happen, which uh, so a function for which uh, for every point in the range there is a unique pre image is called a one to one function or a injective function, right. So, if I, so we will say the injective function. Injective function. I think you know all this. So, every element in R has a unique pre image in A, okay. And similarly, a surjective function. A surjective function is a, or a non two function is a function for which the domain, the co domain and the range are the same. In other words, the surjective function does not leave out anything in here, right. So, no function can leave out anything here, but you can leave out elements here. So, a function that does not leave out elements in the core domain is called a surjective function, okay. So, a surjective function if r equals b, that is all there is to it, right. That is a surjective function. And a function which is both injective and surjective is called a bijective function, okay. So, uh, if it is both uh, bijective function is uh, a function which is both which is both surjective and injective. Okay. So, for a bijective function you will have, so every uh, the co domain coincides with the range and every element in the range has a unique pre image. And you can argue very easily that a bijective function uh, the inverse map is also a valid function, right, because you do not leave out for the inverse map you do not leave out anything here because it is surjective, right. And you do not have the problem of uh, multiple values, right, going back. So, it is it turns out that the inverse mapping is also a function. So, sometimes bijective functions are called invertible functions, okay. Now, uh, the reason I am beginning with an introduction to these is because it plays a very important role in the topic of today's study which is cardinality, okay. So, in plain English cardinality of a set uh, simply refers to the size of the set, the number of elements in the set. Okay. So, uh, it, if you are given a finite set, it simply enumerates the number of elements in the set, right. If this the classroom is the set, the cardinality will be the number of students in it, okay. Now, so this, this topic of cardinality, we are interested in comparing sizes of different sets, okay. So, if you were to give, if you are given two finite sets, let us say this class and some other class. And if you are interested in determining if these two sets are of the same size or if one is bigger than the other, what would you do? You would simply say okay this class is 35 students, another class is 30 students. So, this is bigger or they are equal or whatever, right. You can simply count it out and say one class is bigger than the other or they are equal in size. Now, the problem here, so this is fine as long as the sets are finite, all right. So, if you go on to infinite sets, this kind, this approach breaks down. So, if I give you two infinite sets with uh, sets with infinitely many elements in them, they are both infinite, right. How do you say one is bigger than the other, right. So, this approach breaks down, right. So, if I give you for example, the natural numbers which are which is obviously an infinite set and let us say rational numbers which is also an infinite set, then you cannot easily say that 
well, you cannot I mean they are both infinite how do you say one is they are same size or one is bigger than the other right you cannot right with this particular approach. So, so to, to find a way out of this uh, a mathematician by name Cantor uh, decided that using the concept of bijective functions you can actually compare the sizes of <coughs> infinite sets also. Okay. So, to, let me explain very simply. So, if you were to find let us say this is this class and this is another class with same number of students right then I can find a bijection between the two classes right. So, with every person here I can associate a unique element there and vice versa even right. So, even for finite sets you, you are able to understand that two sets are equal in cardinality if there is a bijection between the two sets right that is it is like a 1 to 1 and on 2 map correct. Now, this concept concept extends to infinite sets also okay. So, what Cantor defined is two sets not necessarily finite finite or infinite two sets a and b have the same cardinality if you can find a bijection between the sets a and b okay. So, that is the definition okay. So, let us uh, let us get into this cardinality. definition sets A and B are said to be equicardinal, equicardinal means same cardinality okay equicardinal uh, notation if there exists a bijection f from a to b okay if some bijection exists between a and b they are said to be equicardinal this is a definition okay this is the definition of the term equicardinal Is that clear? This is the definition. And the related definitions, I will just put down two related definitions. So, B has a cardinality greater than that of A if. there exists an injective function from A to B right. So, if you can put the elements of A to A and B in a 1 to 1 and on 2 map then they are said to be equicardinal. So, if, if it so happens that you can find an injective function from A to B. So, remember what does an injective function? Uh, so, you do not have multiple things mapping to the same same uh, value in the range right. So, in that case this means that the set uh, B has at least as many elements as A probably more or equal right at least as many right. So, this is a similar one right this is for injective function ok. Uh, here the notation is cardinality of uh, B bigger than or equal to. So, if I put two vertical lines it is called it is cardinality ok. Remember I did not tell you what the cardinality itself is when right? I am only comparing cardinalities right. I am not saying that the cardinality is this right as in the case of finite sets right, but I am just saying that one is bigger than the other in this sense ok. sorry uh, cardinality <laughs> greater than or equal to yeah uh, yes. So, greater than or equal to correct ok 
And finally, so finally I want to define uh, what uh, the case where uh, B has a cardinality strictly strictly bigger than A. Okay. So, when do you say one element one set has strictly more elements than another? Ha, you can find an injective function, but there is no bijective function. Right? So, you can find an injective function. So, this is true, but they are not equal cardinal. Right? So, you say, uh, so you say, so in here the notation is, um, so you can write this in words uh, in just like above. So, you say cardinality B is strictly bigger than the cardinality of A if um, there exists an injection or injective function, injective function f from A to B, but A and B are not equicardinal. Right, so, there exists a bijective fun injective function from A to B, but there, there is no bijective function, which means they are not equally equicardinal. Okay. So, this is how you compare sets for cardinality, even infinite sets. Okay. This gives you a framework to compare the sizes of even infinitely infinite sets with infinitely many elements. Okay. So, now we will see that just as I mentioned now uh, sets that have infinite elements uh, can also be of different sizes in this sense. Okay. So, infinity so in some sense all not all infinities are born equal. Okay. There are bigger infinities and smaller infinities in terms of cardinality. Okay. It sounds a bit strange to begin with, but that is actually true as we will see according to these definitions. Okay. So, in fact we can see there are examples of uh, infinite sets where one infinity is strictly bigger than the other infinity. For example, we will see that both natural both natural numbers and real numbers are both infinite sets, but the infinity of the real numbers is actually a bigger infinity than the infinity of natural numbers. Okay, and there are sets which are even bigger infinities than real numbers. Okay, so this is a little uh, hard to digest to begin with but we will we will we will understand it very soon once you have these definitions clear it is actually fairly easy to understand these concepts. Okay. So, now I want to define countability the concept of countability. They still need not be equal right. No, yes. that is by definition they are considered equicardinal. So, if you if you find a bijection between two sets the sets are defined to be equicardinal okay. that is the definition. I am not saying that the sets are equal, obviously the A and B may not be the same set, see what I mean. I am just saying that their cardinalities are equal, right. So, by definition the sets are equicardinal if there exists a bijection between them, even if you find one bijection it is enough. Okay. Okay. So, definition of countability a set E is set to B. Countably infinite if there ex, uh, if it is equicardinal with with n the set of natural numbers. So, uh, as I just said there are bigger infinities and smaller infinities right. So, the infinite so if your set is as big as the set of natural numbers meaning that there exists a bijection between the set you are considering E and the natural numbers then the set E is said to be countably infinite. Okay. The definition clear. So, we just mean so if you are, if you want to establish that some set E given to you is countable, what will you do? Go and find a bijection between E and N, 
right if you succeed it is even if you find one bijection it is definitely countable countably infinite right and a relative uh, related definition uh, a set is countable if it is either finite or countably infinite okay so if a set is either finite we all understand finite sets is either a finite set or a countably infinite set we just speak of it as a countable set so there is a bijection from e to n so if the elements of e can be written as e1 e2 dot 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 correct so the moment you give me a natural number n i can identify the element en uniquely and you give me an element i can identify the index n and this is true for real num uh, even numbers right so for example you can show that uh, so it is clear so if the moment you can put this in a list right it is a countable countably infinite set so i do not see i want to make this very clear uh, this has so the fact that i think the confusion is because the even numbers are a subset of the natural numbers but still they are equi cardinal okay because there is a bijection you see the bijection so i mean if you take the even numbers which is 2 4 6 8 and so on right so this is like 2n right where n n is uh running over the natural numbers and clearly that's a bijection right so even numbers so this is even numbers are equi cardinal with n and therefore they are countably infinite correct is this clear never mind that this is contained in n but they are they are equal in size because there's a bijection similarly odd numbers are also in bijection with natural numbers okay what you can also show us all prime numbers are countably infinite because they can identify the ith prime number <coughs> If I tell you what the twenty-seventh prime number is, you go and find out, right? So, in prime numbers are a countably infinite set, correct? Yeah, if they can be put into a list, which is means that with with natural numbers, right? If you can, what is a bijection after all? So, you have the natural numbers one, two, three, blah, 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 and you write the set in a list, and if all elements get covered. there's a unique association between every natural number and that element and vice versa right correct so in that case it's a countably infinite set okay so if we take the set of all integers for example let's say you take the z, z right z which is 0 plus 1 minus 1 plus 2 minus 2 plus 3 minus 3 and so on right this is also countable right it's a countably infinite set you may now argue that well this z seems to have twice as many elements as natural numbers right because for every natural number there's a minus right so you may it seems tempting to say that this has twice as many elements as the natural numbers no not true it only has as many elements as the natural numbers because there is a bijection right you you are convinced that this is a bijection every integer is contained here now you come up with an integer that's contained here and it's present in that unique spot it's unique index so for every integer i can assign the natural number index right of a countably infinite set and a finite set say for example a set of a just single element irrational number hmm. so does that become count, uh, count uh, uncountable we will get to that you are jumping ahead okay uh
question, but you understand what I mean here, right? So you are asking a question that I have not yet come to, okay? Taking union of countable sets. Uh, but this is okay. So Z is, uh, is everybody convinced? So if you find a bijection, it is equicardinal, okay? There is no other definition. Do not think of it as, oh, one is a subset of the other, so the other must be bigger or some such thing. They are equicardinal if there is a bijection, end of story. Any count in the definition, if you replace natural number with any countably infinite set, it will still make sense. No, the, the concept of a countably infinite set is defined like this. It is equal, for example, you can equivalently define it with z also, there is nothing wrong in doing that, but this is the standard definition, okay. You can say equi, you can say equicardinal with z also, there is nothing wrong with that, but we will stick to n, that is the standard notation. Any other questions? Okay, so so far okay. Now what is so this this is this stuff must be very apparent to you. Okay, now what is not apparent at all, and a lot of people find very surprising, is that the set of rationals is also a countable infinity. Okay, the set of all rat rational numbers Q. Right, the fractions, right? P, P over Q, where Q is not zero. The set of all rational numbers is also countable. Okay. So that seems very surprising in the beginning, because if I give you any any two integers, let's say twenty one and twenty two, there there seems to be so many rationals just between these two integers that it seems to be a hopelessly large number this there are so many more rational it looks like right see after all all integers are rationals all natural numbers are in fact rationals and there are so many more rationals an infinite number of rationals between any two integers correct so it seems like the the set of ra its rational numbers must be a much larger infinity than this n right but no it's not okay there are only as many ra rational numbers as there are natural numbers or integers okay which is quite surprising right now how do you prove this how do you prove anything is countable yeah, should be a find a bijection so if you find a bijection from so somebody managed to find a bijection so we are asserting that q is uh, uh, q is countably infinite all right uh, so another example so let's just consider rationals in uh, rationals between 0 and 1 okay i will prove uh, that rationals are countable a little bit later so these are rationals in it's a countable set right what do you have to do it's always the same thing there's no different every time you have to prove that something is countable you have to find a you have to either say it's a finite set in which case there's no problem at all or you have to prove that there is a bijection with natural numbers you have to put the set in a list and the set the set should be finished covered right that's all you have to do so how do you prove that rationals in 0, 1 is a countable set, find a bijection, right. So, here is a bijection. You write 1, 1 by 2, well, maybe you can put a 0 here if you want, okay. If let us be done with 0 first, 0, 1, 1 by 2, then you put 1 by 3, 2 by 3. Okay, so I am increasing the denominators. Then I do 1 by 4. Now I do not do 2 by 4 because it is already there, 2 by 4 is half, right. Then I put 3 by 4, 4 by 4 is already there, 1, right. And then 1 by 5, 2 by 5, 3 by 5, 4 by 5, and so on and so forth, right. 5 by 5 is already there. Then I have 1 by 6, 2 by 6 is already there, 3 by 6 is already there, 4 by 6 is already there, then 
5 by 6 and also 1. Okay. I'm only so now all you have to show that this listing so I am listing this set out right you see what I am doing right I am increasing the denominator and I am changing the numerator uh, one by one and if it turns out that the element is already there I leave it out ok it is a very simple construction. Now you give me any rational number between 0 and 1 you choose 1 ok I will find it in this set right whatever rational number you give me I can find it in this set right. So, every rational number in 0 1 the interval 0 1 has a natural number index I can speak of the ith rational number correct is this clear. So, there are only as many rational numbers as in at least rational numbers in 0 1 as there are integers correct. So, although there seems to be so many in 0 1 it actually is in bijection with natural numbers is that clear. Uh, so, I have you understood how I created this list. Uh, so, every time I increase I increase the denominator and I go 1 by k 2 by k and so on and if that number is already there leave it out. My claim is that this list that I have just completed this is an infinite list of course but this list has every rational number in 0 1 how do you prove that you give me a rational number p by q right you reduce to its simplest form ok no common denominator etc p by q you go to the point where that q is in the denominator and check those guys it will be there right because it will be there or it would have been covered earlier right if p by q is not in its simplest form it would have been covered earlier correct that is it. So, every rational number is 0 1 is, is in this list. So, it is in bijection with n correct which means uh, q intersection 0 1 the rationals in 0 1 is equicardinal with n therefore, countable countably infinite ok. Where n is we have not touched yet n yet right every element between 0 and 1 is there. In ah, the so, this no what I really mean by writing something in a list is that this is 1, this is 2, this is 3, this is bijection with see once you write the set down I can also write the set of natural numbers 1, 2, 3 dot dot dot. But there should exist a function between them. Ah, this is the bijection. So, with natural number 1 you associate 0, number 2 you associate 1, with 23 you associate the 23rd element you know that is it. It is just index association but there is no real function like. This is the function f of 1 is so the function from n to the set is f of 1 is 0, f of 2 is 1, f of 3 is half, f of 4 is 1 by 3 and so on that is the bijection. See after all what is a bijection with n it is simply a listing of the set right n n is 1 2 3 dot 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 it think of it as writing the names of students right 1 so and so 2 so and so you are essentially putting the set in a list that is what a bijection with n, n really means after all right. So, for every unique natural number every natural number there is a unique rational number and given any rational number I can find the index uniquely right. So, it is the bijection is that clear. So, this so this is the bijection it is not like I am just writing out the set that is not true that is what that is not that is what we are going to see. Oh, that's not so, rational numbers are special in the sense that although it looks like a very I mean they are they are distributed all over the line right in any tiny interval of the real numbers you can find so many rational numbers, but there are only as many of them as there are natural numbers they are countable. It is a very manageable set in that sense right? there are only countably many rational numbers right. It is not true. So, what is important and it was realized first by Cantor or at least proven first by Cantor is that there are infinite sets which are truly bigger than natural numbers or integers or rational numbers ok. There are bigger infinities than simply the infinity of rational numbers 
okay and those sets are called uncountable sets uncountably infinite or just uncountable yes uncountably infinite is a you know it's a tautology you don't have to say it right uncountable sets are infinities which are bigger than natural numbers okay uh before we get there i want to state a very important theorem without proof okay let i be a countable index set and let ai i belong to i b a collection of countable sets so this theorem i will not prove it's a very important theorem uh, you can find the proof in rudin or any analysis book okay so i am taking a uh, some index set i is some index set and uh this ai index by this i this set is this these are all countable sets okay then the theorem says then union i belongs to i ai is a countable set okay so in other words so this is more glibly stated as a countable union a countable union of countable sets is countable right this is a more colloquial way of stating the theorem so what i am saying so i am taking a bunch of countable sets okay and i am unioning all these countable sets and the index set that i am unioning over is also a countable set okay for example this index set could be natural numbers or integers or even numbers or rational numbers even okay and for each such index i i have a countable set ai each of these a's are countable okay so even if one of these a's is not countable this is not true okay so if each of these a's is countable and i is a countable index set then the union over i ai is also a countable set okay is that clear so which is countable union of countable sets is countable that's what this is okay clear this i will not prove okay this requires a proof but i will not prove it in class okay but you don't have to uh, you don't have to we don't have spent time on this in class okay but you have to know this result okay uh, so using this using this theorem we can prove that the set of all rational numbers is countable why huh each interval ah uh, this can be a proceed this i have proven that the rationals in 0 1 is countable it's a countable set so really rational numbers in any i comma i plus 1 is a countable set right and then i can write q as so now i can write so corollary what's a corollary something that follows from a theorem right q is countable right proof you can write q as union i belongs to z uh union i belongs to z q intersection i comma i plus 1 right correct so just like i argued for 0 1 you can argue that 
any i i plus 1 the rationals in there are countable in fact you just add i to each of these guys you have found a bijection so this is a countable set now i am unioning over all integers not necessarily positive integers but integers which is also a countable set but this union is all of rational numbers so a countable union of countable sets is countable so q is a countable set so truly there are only as many rational sets there are natural numbers okay so that answers i think your question right so if you union two countable sets you always get countable set as long as the number of sets you are unioning is also count okay is clear to everybody any questions at this point okay so i think i just ran out of time right so uh, we have to continue next class